You may have noticed my last few videos and even my Instagram has been sparse in on location photography content. And that's because after four years of service getting me out into the remote boonies of flyover country to create inspiring photography content, my trusty rusty station wagon, the linchpin of my operation, has finally gone and bit the dust on me. If you'd follow for a while, you know how much I've depended on, loved, and basically lived in this adorable pile of garbage, even though it does give me regular trouble. At the end of last summer, I blew a front tire, and then a few weeks later, I blew the other front tire. And then, with only a couple hundred miles on the first front tire, it exploded spectacularly just after I returned from Scotland, which, considering I was unable to work during my tenure there, as a condition both of my visa and my scholarship, it was a financially inconvenient time to realize there must have been an alignment issue, or so I thought. Actually, as soon as I got my tax check, I rushed the car into our local mechanic where it was basically pronounced dead on the spot, as apparently, and certainly due in no small part to the abuse I've subjected it to over the years, all the chassis connections are rusted so badly that it's not possible for the car to maintain an alignment. So I've been driving it on the courtesy spare, sparingly, only for essential purposes, and I say all this not to complain, but to explain, as I'm in fact very privileged to have a redundant second mode of transportation just waiting in the wings for the change of seasons to arrive. Meet Wendy. She's nothing fancy, a 1998 Honda Shadow 750, a classic bike in many senses. With a chain drive, two carburetors, and a water-cooled, four-plug, twin-cylinder engine, she's a fairly high-maintenance lady. Don't even get me started on the tube tires. This is my 17th year owning this motorcycle. She's closing in on 100,000 miles, about 80,000 of those with my butt in the saddle. taken this bike through New York City, wiped out in downtown Chicago, sat and watched the sunset in California and 46 other states, been to Sturgis three times just on accident, and coast to coast honestly more times than I can count, and today I'm hoping I can pump some air in the tires, some juice in the battery, and count on Wendy to provide a much needed escape from home life to enjoy some fresh springtime country scenery through the lens. feel right at home. You may be able to see this, but uh, right out in the distance here, past the end of this irrigator, there's a lone tree. And uh, so I put that in my targets and try to make that my photo subject for today. But I got a lot of stuff to unpack here. And uh, one of the main disadvantages to, to uh, photographing on the motorcycle is uh, it takes quite a bit of effort to get things packed and unpacked. It's not a fast process, but uh, get the gear unloaded and make a photo.
So a couple days ago when I was scouting out this location, all of this land was uh, completely submerged in water. Uh, so this is like the river bottoms. It's sort of a floodplain where the Wabash River, which is uh, just over here behind this tree line, will come out when it floods and, and flood out this cornfield. So uh, unfortunately, it looks like the farmers have got the field pretty well drained because all the water is gone now. I guess that's kind of convenient because I don't have to break out the hip waters, the hip waders that I'd packed along uh, just in case I had to wade out into this field. But I was really hoping to catch a nice reflection of the sunset in the flood water. But I guess that's just as well because uh, there is not much of an opportunity for a sunset tonight. So uh, aside from the phenomenal motorcycling temperature, it's 71 degrees right now, uh, the weather conditions aren't especially ideal for a photo outing but I did want to come in with my camera and scope out this photo subject so that maybe it's something I can work on if, it's, if I find it especially interesting. I brought a couple of different lenses, my 135 millimeter F2, so that I can try to create a little background separation from this tree by using a shallow depth of field effect. And then I'll work in a little closer with my 16 to 35 millimeter F4 lens uh, to make more of a conventional type of landscape shot where I can create background separation for the tree by foregrounding it against the sky. Okay, I, I think I've achieved the uh, desired proximity to the tree, so I'll go ahead and break out my 135 millimeter lens and take that shallow depth of field shot. As a somewhat welcome surprise, there's not as much busyness behind the background as I expected, so maybe I'll shift that shallow depth of field effect around and uh, incorporate more of the foreground, like this uh, wet, muddy part of the field, and sort of blur that out a little bit. As a second and much less welcome surprise, I realized I've also hiked all the way out here without my tripod. So it's about 10 minutes until sunset and I am looking forward to possibly getting some nice sunset colors over the tree in this bow that's sort of formed by the clouds. So I'm gonna run all the way back to my motorcycle, grab my tripod, come back out and hopefully get some nice uh, late work done uh, into the colorful part of the night. So I thought to mention once again that uh, I love this sling bag because of its extra strap. It's hard to find a sling bag. It's got that extra strap that lets you do some uh, running and extra mobile activities. And there's a link to this sling bag in the video description. Check it out. Ooh. Well, I think that's pretty much the death knell on uh, color. I don't see a lot of uh, chance still for the sky to blossom out. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, I've got the tripod now. I can keep working this scene into the blue hour and see what I can make out of it, if anything. So I'm really glad that I came in off the road and worked a little closer to this subject. There's been a lot of pleasant discoveries. Although it is deceptively muddier here in the back of the field, uh, turns out I could have put those hip waders to good use. A ride home on the motorcycle in the dark with wet feet, not necessarily a great time. So it's also nice to see that the tree sets up on top of an irrigation ditch, so that elevates it up from the plane to the landscape a little bit. And uh, that way I don't have to get quite as close to get the tree limbs out against the sky. Also, this tree has a phenomenal amount of character. You can see that there's a branch down that's leaned up against the trunk of the tree. Uh, there's some vineage. I don't know if I'll be able to capture all that detail, but uh, even out into the uh, outer limbs, which are starting to bud, uh, this, the, <laughs> this tree is much more interesting than it looks from the road. So I'm really happy to discover that. And also, uh, from, from back here, I can see that in the back section of the field, there are more lone trees like this. And so some of these are really interesting. So uh, maybe I've given myself some insight into an area that I might like to investigate later. So you can see that I possess myself so that there's a break in the foliage in the background and I've put the tree right there. I don't think I'm going to stray much from this area in my composition but uh, maybe working just a little closer and further to see which of these puddled areas uh, look most interesting in the foreground of the photo. So you can see that there's some uh, unnatural linearity to the uh, 
the puddles in the foreground, right? They're actually made from these, these irrigators are on wheels. And so they move them, they swing them in and out of the field and they move them around to different locations and it leaves these tracks. So that's most of the water that's left in the field is in the tracks of the irrigators. So I'm going to play with this linearity first. Uh, so it's sort of uh, counterbalancing the line of the levee, right? It's giving us a nice angle. And then um, what I'll probably will ultimately desire to do if it's possible is to move into some of the more rounder shaped puddles like those that are closer to this tree so that I can sort of, I feel like that's a more uh, natural shape that's a little less distracting. The first photograph is at uh, for eight seconds at F10, focused on the tree. And I'm just going to play back this image um, to make sure that for that long exposure. It's not especially windy out right now, but there is a slight breeze. I'm going to play that back and look at the detail, the details in the limbs and make sure that uh, the breeze didn't cause any blurriness in the photo. Okay, for the next photo, I've had to kind of be careful because I'm leaving really deep footprints everywhere. So it's kind of like when you're out photographing in the snow and you've got to think about where you're going to walk next and where your next photo is going to be. So you don't go making tracks through your photo. It's a lot like that in this deep mud. Um, so for this one, I've I wanted to put the tree uh, a little bit off center. And I've gone for a vertical composition because I'd like to feature some of the patterns here, um, the textures in the sand in the field, and then also um, some of the leftover crops that are here. I can see, uh, I think I can see two seasons worth of crops here on the ground. And so it looks like I'm just waiting for a, a headlight to pass through the frame. I'll catch this shot and then I'd like to move around and maybe try to get a reflection in the puddle if it's not too dark. And then, uh, and then I think I'll be just about out of shooting light and I'm gonna have to get out of here. I don't know if you can hear these coyotes. I don't, I don't know if they like it that I'm here or not. Speaking of affiliate products that I've recommended, uh, this is a great, a great opportunity where with these 30 second exposures, I can unclip this strap so that it's not flapping around in the wind and threatening to move the camera and uh, shake it around and make my picture blurry. So great, great accessory for landscape photography. And uh, there's a, an affiliate link for it in the description below so you can pick one up for yourself. And I'm leveling the tripod by sticking one leg down into the mud. I uh, ran into an issue on the way here. Apparently, uh, the, uh, the vibration of the motorcycle caused the feet of the tripod to um, vibrate off. So that's a, a problem to solve for another day. Okay, again for 30 seconds here at F10. And I, I think we're close to 30 millimeters here. 20, yeah, almost 30 millimeters on the nose. Okay, I'm going to take this one, one more time because as I played it back, I see that uh, there's an intersection here between this tree line in the background and the main tree. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit to the right and take that one more time. I think I'll conclude this video right here in the field, like literally in the field. By now, you know if I got some good photos, I don't know. Uh, but if nothing else, I enjoyed getting out. It's great to be out after dark in the outdoors, 
and not feeling like I'm about to freeze to death. So uh, really enjoying the change of season and the opportunity to get out and explore the Midwest landscape. If you're new here, that's what I like to do on this channel. So if you appreciate that, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe so maybe I can see you in the next video. And until I do, you keep an eye out and a foot forward. And thank you for watching.